We can, uh, yeah. You can see it now? Yeah. Is it up? Yeah. Yep. Thank you very much. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity to address you today, and I, I really thank you. I'm speaking on behalf of the Clinical Nurse Practice 2 team, which consists of Tracy Symes. She's the, the leader of this unit. Uh, Ellie Cutmore and myself, I'm Daniel. Now, Clinical Nurse Practice 2 is very much a hands-on uh, practical nursing unit. It's a second year subject, and it involves 120 hours of clinical placement where our students go out to our industry partners, to the hospitals and the medical centers, and they work alongside their future colleagues. But before we can allow them to go, they have to do 24 hours of skills training on campus. And that takes the form of three days of what we call residential schools held in our um, laboratories. Part of this um, on-campus training includes a medication calculation competency test. We have to be sure that our students know how to work out medication doses, um, infusion rates, things like that. So the test is a digital test. It's done online. It's hosted by an external service provider called iTeleLearn. And our students know it well because they use it from term one, first year, right through their bachelor's degree. We always have it invigilated. It's held in our computer labs on campus and it's an open book test. It includes 20 questions that they get from a very large bank of questions. And we, we ask them before they come on campus to go into our telelearn and practice the test. They can practice it as many times as they like because they constantly get new questions. But when they sit the test, they can only have three attempts and they must score 100% to pass. As soon as they complete the test, they get a time date stamp certificate, which they upload into Moodle, and we then verify that indeed they have finished the test. So the situation in um, term one of this year, we had just over 400 students enrolled in this unit, and we were in the midst of giving them our on-campus sessions when COVID hit. As a result, we ended up with three cohorts of students, three groupings. The first group went through the 24 hours on campus and they did their tests. They were ready to go out on clinical placement. The second group, they did two days on campus, including this medication test. And then we sent them home with another eight hours to do online. And then they went off on their placement. The third group of students never got to come on campus. 112 students that were unable to do this um, on-campus training. So we had three options for this group of students. We could advise them to withdraw from the unit, which would mean it would set back their degrees by another year. Or alternatively, we could defer the on-campus um, on residential school in the hope that by term three, things would be normalized and we can allow them back on campus. So we just delay the clinical placement. Alternatively, we could go online, which is what we opted to do. The problem, of course, was how do you take an invigilated test online when the students are off campus? Well, we gave it a go, and the results were really astounding. We were so surprised. Now, what you're looking at are our two groups of students, our on-campus group, and our off, sorry, our off campus group of students. We're looking at the number of attempts that they needed to pass the test. Our on campus group, on average, they needed two attempts. 50% of them needed two attempts to pass the test. The other 50% had to have multiple attempts. Our off campus group, 82% of them passed the test first time around. But more worryingly was that. Our on-campus group, the group that were in the lab with us present watching them, 12% of them had more than three goes at passing the test. So technically they cheated. Whereas our group that were sitting in their homes off campus, none of them cheated. We also found a very strong, but of course negative correlation between the number of practice tries and the number of attempts they needed. The more they practice, the fewer attempts they needed to pass the test, which is quite natural. 
So how do we take a online test off campus and still invigilate it? Well, we found, first of all, with the preparation, communication was extremely important. These students were in a high state of stress. They didn't know what the future was holding for them. We decided to take the test via Zoom and we kept an open line of communication. We kept them informed using emails, online forums um, and phone. We phoned them as well. Next issue was, of course, academic integrity. How do you maintain it? So we compiled an academic integrity agreement, which is just a piece of paper, but still it told them of the importance of maintaining this integrity. And we added to the agreement that they had to have a photo ID with them when they took the test and they needed to have a functioning camera. We had to be able to see them while they sat the test. We organized four Zoom sessions because we couldn't look after 112 students in one Zoom session. The students could elect which Zoom session they would uh, take the test in, and they did that using um, shared doc surveys. The minute we knew, and we organized to have three teachers present for, in each of the Zoom sessions. Now, as soon as we knew which students were attending which Zoom session, we compiled an attendees list, and we used photo IDs, which we got off AIMS our um, university management system. Most of our students are external students and we simply wouldn't recognize them visually. So we needed those photos. Now, during the test, we opened up the session about 20 minutes early and there was a teacher present. We were there to calm the students, make sure everybody was logged on to iTeleLearn, that everyone had a functioning camera. We took a photo roll call when we started the test, they had their cameras on and we recorded the session. Recording the session was just so that we had a permanent record of the test in case there was some sort of an issue later on. We developed a support system for these students. That was very important. Some of the students, the line would drop out or they got a medication um, calculation wrong. What we did is we dis uh, enabled the private chat with between participants, but we allowed them to chat to the host. So the student would then send a message to the host saying they needed help. The host would then communicate with the teachers using Microsoft Teams and would ask one of the teachers to contact the particular student. And the teacher would then phone the student and offer support. And the system worked beautifully. The teacher would offer remedial help. And if they found that the learning deficit was severe, they would advise the student to leave the Zoom session. They'd organize a time to meet with the student to give them extra remedial help and then place them into one of the other Zoom test sessions. To verify whether they had completed the test, as soon as the students finished the test, they put their name in the chat line. And of course, a timestamp appears next to it. And then they would upload those time date stamped certificate into Moodle. And we could then correlate the time in the chat line against the certificate. So we knew they had done their, their tests during the Zoom session. To gauge success, student feedback was really important to us. And the feedback we got was overwhelmingly positive. The students said they felt well supported they said they were less stressed. They were working in their own environment on their own laptops. The only negative feedback we had was a couple of the students had internet issues. The lines were dropping out, of course, but it was really no more than a half a dozen students. We had a few that, that had hardware issues. They didn't have suitable PCs or they didn't have functioning cameras, but all of these problems were resolved. There was no issues that we couldn't resolve, all the students set the test. And then our TeleLearn gave us administrative access to the program. So we were able to go into the program and we were able to look at the students' activity online. We were able to ascertain how many times they had practiced, how many attempts they had, that's where I got those graphs from. And we were also able to see if the lines had dropped out we could, we could verify that because they didn't get the question wrong. 
yet they stopped the test. So we were able to ascertain success that way. So the results were that this is directly from the graph that you saw earlier. The on-campus group, on average, they needed two attempts to pass the test, whereas our off-campus group, they needed one attempt, 1 1.2 on average, to pass the test. The on-campus group, they practiced about 2.2 times before they set the test. Whereas our off-campus group, they were a lot more relaxed, they had more time, they practiced more than five times before they set the test. And what about the staff time involvement? Our on-campus group, 400 students, that's our total cohort, they took two attempts to pass. Our student to teacher ratio is 16 students on campus to each teacher. That comes to 50 hours that it takes to get the whole cohort through the test. Sorry, our off-campus group, 400 students, we took the whole cohort again. They took 1.2 attempts to pass. We had three teachers present in every Zoom session, but we had a maximum of 40 students per Zoom session. Comes to 36 hours. So theoretically, we actually saved 14 hours. So the conclusion is going online to do an invigilated medication competency test. The student feedback was overwhelmingly positive. We were able to maintain our academic integrity. The students felt well supported. They felt relaxed doing the test. They practiced more and they got through the test a lot quicker, fewer attempts and it saved us uh, staff hours. So it would appear that going online to do an invigilator test for this particular unit, it does work. But more importantly for us, it's freed up really valuable time in our residential schools. The residential schools are just so time poor. It's a crazy time. If we can take this activity out of the residential school, it will free up an afternoon which we can better use to teach our, our students really valuable skills. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daniel. That's wonderful to hear of your positive uh, experience in your unit <laughs> and such a seemingly difficult task, really, you know, offline in vigilation and such crucial um, assessment as well. So oh. congratulations on that. Uh, oh, anyone it, has... it was the team. It really was a team effort. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments or questions from anyone, please? Um, I've got a comment. I think that's really, really remarkable research and very counterintuitive, isn't it? It's, <laughs> it's just fantastic. I had a, a quick question. It's not really that important, though. When you went to find their um, photos on AIMS, some students don't always have photos. What did you do about that? That's why they needed to have photo ID with them. Yeah. Okay. That, that was the only reason. Hmm. Really interesting approach. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.